Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today's build is a Marksman Rogue build that will be using Ballistas for the main damage type. Now we're going to synergize it by running a low life build that gets all of its mana back from shifting around. You'll get 48 mana back per shift, which is going to allow you to keep your max amount of Ballistas up at all times. On top of that, we're going to have Ballistas dropping two potions each over the course of their lifetime, and that's going to allow you to pick up the potion since you're low life automatically you'll also have automatic consumption while shift is going and each one's going to give you about 600 to 700 ward which is really going to stack up and that's going to be your survivability you'll be able to have three to four thousand ward during an entire boss fight and you don't even have to craft a lot of items most of the items on this build will be unique now we'll also be working in our quiver which is going to allow arrows to fly all over the place you're going to shoot off a flurry so that you can pick more arrows up and for each arrow that you pick up you're going to get multiple dust shrouds which is going to allow you to get 100% glancing below almost at all times. You'll be capped at 75% dodge at almost all times and it's going to give ballistas more attack speed, more damage and if you pick up four of them quick enough 100% crit chance which is huge. Let's go ahead and get into the skills. For skills I'm running ballista, shift, smoke bomb, dark quiver, and Acid Flask. For Ballista, now the way I have Ballista set up, you can build it two ways. One, you can build into having the maximum duration that you can have, or two, you can build it like I have here where it reduces the duration, but you get extra damage. Now the difference is, is since you have basically unlimited mana, you're gonna be able to get mana back faster than you're gonna be casting these. You can get more potions if you reduce the duration, because with two points in care package, most will drop healing potions over its duration, and it will drop two of them, and it will be over its full duration. So if the duration of Ballista is longer, it takes longer from the potions to actually drop, which means you still only get two of them if the Ballista lasts the whole time, but if you cast another Ballista and you make one cancel out early, you might not get the second potion. So by having the cooldown or the duration of it as small as possible, they're more likely to disappear quicker, which means you can summon another one. So you get more potions faster. We have one point in efficient construction. This reduces the mana cost and the duration. One point in practical build, 40% more damage, 40% more attack speed, and 25% less duration. Now these two points you can remove and put those two points into sturdy foundation if you want to have the longest duration and not reduce it and here we have two points in sturdy foundation for 50% health 20% duration and if you switch those around you'll get back 45% of the duration and gain another 20% here and then of course the two points in care package for two potions to be dropped four points in Alexar of construction which gives you 80% more damage for your ballista as long as you've constructed it within four seconds of using a potion and you're always using potions one point in rapid fire, three points in shared enhancement, so it gets 45% of your damage. One point in heavy bolts, two points in sharpened tips for a 6% more base crit chance, and two points in light bolts for that more attack speed. For a shift, we have shift set up to give us as much dex as possible to cast acid flask for us to use a potion when we're low on life, which is all the time to give us haste and to give us a huge amount of mana back. So we have two points in Shadow Recuperation. This heals you for a little bit. That's not really a big deal. Of course, if you don't want the heal at all, definitely put into the more damage. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Four points in Swift Recovery since you are at low life. And actually, technically, this is just below half life, which you'll always be below. You get 48 mana gain when you shift. Three points in Momentum gives you more haste one point in emergency flask so that if you're below 50 percent health and you have a potion you will use it one point in shadow slip which means you're invulnerable while shifting five points in elusive so you get 150 dodge rating per dex point that you have for one second after shifting two points in parting gift and two points in arrival gift so that you have a hundred percent chance to throw down a flask at your arrival and at your departure for smoke bomb we have this set up to give us some dust shrouds and to give us some base crit with our bow. 
which we'll be using flurry not spec you don't really need the crit damage we also have the huge starting area and everything else so that we can try and be in smoke bomb as much as possible for that dust shroud effect so we have one point in shrouded in darkness so that you'll get a dust shroud every two seconds Four points in rapid concealment makes it every one second. One point in shared concealment, so it will also give it to your ballistas. Three points in impending gloom, so that the cloud grows faster by 30%. Four points in generosity, so the starting area is 80% larger. Five points in lingering fume, so it lasts as long as possible. And two points in shadow hunter, so that you have 4% more base crit with your bow attacks. However, you will be blinded. For Dark Quiver, now this is normally a skill that I am not super happy with. Dark Quiver is like kind of clunky for me to use. However, in this build where you're not actually firing skills at enemies and you don't really have to pay attention to enemies, you're just shifting around, it makes it very nice because you can fire Flurry in any direction you want since you don't really care about hitting the enemies because you're not really doing the damage. So you can fire off in any direction and pick up more arrows. Now as you pick them up, it buffs your ballistas. And it buffs you defensively, which is huge. Also, when you pick them up, it will cause knockback, which means if there's any enemies around you, it actually knocks them back. So it's very defensive, and for your ballistas, it's very offensive. So we have one point in mending so that you gain some health. It's kind of a negative effect for you, but it's not very much health, so you don't have to worry about it. Five points in perfect bolts, so when you pick up a black arrow, your ballistas gain 20 bow physical damage, which is a huge amount. Four points in Keen Shots, so they also get 8% attack speed, and one point in Heavy Artillery. If your Ballistas are up for you for a long period of time, long enough for you to pick up four arrows, they gain 100% Critical Strike. Now this is possible because sometimes the Ballistas will land in a very small area, and if you can get three or four of them in a very small area, you can just sit in that one spot, fire off Multi-Shot, or Flurry, which does multi-shots, it, it fires three of them, and so you'll pick up all the arrows all at once in less than a second, and that'll allow your ballistas to start critting. Now that won't always happen, but when it does, you will notice it, and it is very effective. Three points in Nightfall, so that when you pick up a black arrow, you get three Dust Shroud stacks for four seconds. Now that's stacking with the Dust Shrouds that you also get from Smoke Bomb, so it's almost... It's very easy for you to get 100% glancing blow, and your dodge ring is just going to be capped out. One point in accessible, one point in quickened arrows so that there's some instant arrows right next to you when you cast it. One point in large quiver, two points in crippling arrows, and one point in fend off. This is what causes that knockback every time you pick up a black arrow. Now if you don't want to do the knockback, I really enjoyed it because especially in the arena where mobs can get all over you, this will knock them back so they can't attack you and let you keep moving on, you can shift or whatever. If you don't put into those, I would put two more points into Nightfall because getting five Dust Shroud stacks means for every arrow you pick up, that's 25% glancing blow, which means it's going to be incredibly easy to pick up three or four arrows within four seconds and keep yourself at 100% glancing blow plus at all times, not to mention that will stack with what you have in your passives and what you get from Smoke Bomb. And then for Acid Flask, there's nothing really special about Acid Flask, it's just a free skill that you get every time you shift, so I figured you might as well use it. It will give you haste, it will put some debuffs on the enemies, so that's always useful. Two points in Hingering Mixture, gives it a slow chance to enemies, one point in Lightweight, one point in Debilitate. This gives it a 50% chance to apply Frailty on the enemies that it hits. Four points in Splash Zone to increase the area. Two points in Corrosive. Three points in Elixir of Speed. This gives it a 75% chance to give you haste. Four points in Tempered Glass. For 400% Armor Shred chance, this is very effective against enemies. The Ballistas will start doing more damage. One point in Poison Poles, one point in Lingering Toxicity, and one point in Amatoxic Poles. For passives, 32 points in the Rogue Base class, with 8 points in Steady Hand, 1 point in Guile, 5 points in Evasion, 5 points in Agility, 5 points in Sapping Strikes, and 8 points in Critical Precision. I have 8 points in the Blade Dancer with all 8 points in Cloak of Shadows. The reason we went for this wasn't necessary for the Glancing Blow, it's for the Dexterity. For every point of Dexterity, the Blistas gain 1% attack speed, so this is 8% attack speed for the Blistas, which is really nice. And then the Marksmen are Mastered, 
class, we have 72 points with 8 points in Draining Arrows, 8 points in Focus Fire, 5 points in Assassin's Cyber, 8 points in Concentration, 1 point in Wound Maker, 1 point in Meditation, 6 points in Heightened Senses, 8 points in Reflection, 6 points in Sniper's Gambit, 10 points in Ethereal Arrows, 5 points in Mana Wrap, 1 point in Barrage of Pain, and 5 points in Perfect Aim. For items and idols, the idols that you want are any of the 2x2s that have plus bow physical damage for Ballista. So you don't even care what the suffix is, just get as many of those prefixes as you can. And it can roll up to, well it says 400% to 1000%, but that means 4 to 10. So you can get up to 10 bow physical damage for the Ballista for each one of these. And then as you can tell, we're running a lot of uniques. And each one of them serves a purpose. So first off, the reason for this build even began was because I found the Urethans Stand Bow, which gives you two maximum ballistas increase, which means I no longer needed to put a maximum ballista on my chest, which means that I wear a unique instead of having to do a crafted one. Now the nice thing about this bow is it gives you a lot of mana, it gives you some resistances, it also gives your minions, which will be your ballistas, a huge amount of bow physical damage. What's nice about that is that bow physical damage stacks up with the idols, and then of course you do have some regular bow physical damage of your own, and since we have 45% conversion of that damage, some of that will even go to your ballistas as well. And then for our other uniques we have, because we're running low life, in Zinguius and the last steps of the living. Between these two you're going to be losing up to 35% of your current health every second and gain 35% of your missing health as ward. You also get increased attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed if you use a potion. And since we're always using a potion, it's really nice to get that. And then of course we're also immune to... Now we're also wearing the blue Clamor Barbuette because it comes with both dex and int, which means lots of dodge. The dexterity also gives attack speed to the ballistas. The 12 int is going to help with your ward retention, a little bit of necrotic resistance, and then more ward per second. Then for the amulet, I have the conundrum on, which gives us 100% of our potion health is converted to ward. We cannot leech life, we do not regenerate health. And we get 25% more physical damage while at full health, which is never going to happen. However, the 100% health conversion to ward is the biggest thing. Now, you can also get this on a belt. However, I didn't want to use the belt that comes with it. I chose to use the amulet instead because with this belt, the Strands of Souls, it instead gives you a huge amount of ward gain when you do use a potion. So we were getting double the amount of ward gain. And then this also gives you 100% of your mana spent gain as ward, which is going to be, you know, every time you cast a Blissa. This also gives you more ward retention, ward on kill, which you won't be getting the kill, so that doesn't really affect you. But you also get more ward per second. And then for the last unique warring is Mervyn's Wit. And the reason for this is it gives you decks, it gives you chance to find potions, and it gives minions, which will be your Blissas, more bow critical strike base chance, which is huge. And then it's a big boost with the 85% increased bow minion damage and one mercenary, although the mercenary is pretty much useless. And then for the crafted items, we have on a quiver with dex, bow physical damage, minion damage, elemental resist. Our rings have critical strike chance, elemental damage, health and dodge. The other ring has set necrotic and poison, lightning damage, elemental resist and dodge. This one's a remnant from another build, I didn't feel like crafting another one. But if you do put on rings, make sure to get dex on them. That's really all that matters. You can do minion dodge instead of elemental resist if you want. And for the gloves, we have dex, minion physical damage, regular minion damage, and hybrid health. For the character sheet, as you can see, we're not really capped on any resistances. We don't have a lot of armor. Our dodge sits at 33% when we're just sitting here. We have barely over 1,000 health. However, because of how much ward you can get just from the potions, that's what will keep you alive. And then as you can see, just with using Smoke Bomb, your dodge is going to go up. And this is because of the dust shrouds that you have at 55%. And then what you'll also have from this is the fact that, let's get to our Oh, here 16% normally just with smoke bomb you can get from 16% all the way up to 56% and then don't forget that you'll have these arrows and as you get the arrows you're going to jump up a whole bunch every time that you pick them up and just like that we're at 76% without even using smoke bomb 
Alright, so quickly to get into the skills, I'm gonna put shift, smoke bomb, and dark quiver all on autocast. And then I like to have my ballistas. I'll manually cast them, and then I'll just kind of use flurry whenever I want to start picking up my dark quivers or my dark arrows. Now, for the character sheet, as you can see, as I start to pick these up, you'll notice we're at 100% glancing blow. Actually, over 100% glancing blow, just like that. And just that easy to get your 100% glance blows. You pick these up, there it is. So as long as you're just going around and focusing on picking up the arrows, you'll get your 100% glancing blow. And then where the potions come in, so normally you have about 1500 ward. But as you start to cast your ballistas and get them off the ground, you're shifting, you're picking up your arrows, you'll see my mana is staying full. As you, as you start to pick up these potions, you'll see that my ward jumped up to over 3000 just like that. And remember, as long as you're constantly casting these, and you'll see it in the gameplay, it's really easy to do. You just go around, pick up your arrows, it's boosting the damage, the ballistas are killing everything for you, you're getting your potions, and your ward's going to sit between three and 5,000 almost at all times. Then to show you the kind of damage that it can do, you put your ballistas up, you have them targeting, and then you start picking up your black arrows, and you'll notice they're hitting for 13,000 plus. And as you have the potions, as long as you can one of those as you cast them and you're you get them going you'll notice they're hitting for 27,000 you can make them hit for between 20 and 40,000 as long as you're just focused on getting through so I was having to push A to make it actually target the dummy and it they have a little less duration also if you do go the increased duration instead of the reduced duration they'll have that chance to crit all the time because you'll be picking up more of the black arrows which is definitely going to be helpful just like the four of them so they should have 100% crit and you can see they're doing 20 to 30. Alright let's go ahead and get into the gameplay.